Hey, Fayetteville First Family, wanted to bring you an update, a uh, ministry moment, a word of encouragement with where we are in the life of our congregation and the life of our community. As most of you are aware, for the last two weeks, we have resumed in-person worship with guidelines and safety protocols in place that will allow us to worship uh, safely and worship in this beautiful facility. All of that has gone very well. I cannot be more grateful to those who have made a way for us to worship in person, have made it possible for us to be together, and provided safety for those who've come into this place. I'm grateful also to those who have stayed at home if they felt unsure about the current situation, if they felt it was best to socially distance. This is a certainly a unique time in the life of our world and the life of our congregation. And I'm grateful to all of our members for whatever decisions have been made. One of the things that we have been doing is prayerfully considering the next steps, but also paying attention to what's happening in our county and in the surrounding areas. Uh, it's come to our attention that all the ICU beds at Piedmont Fayette are at capacity, not necessarily with COVID-related illnesses, but the hospital has shut down, no visitor has reinstituted no visiting policy. And moving forward, we're discerning what's best for our congregation and the community. We've also been paying attention to the numbers through the website globalpandemic.com, which gives a county by county, case by case, and assigns a color coding to each county. Currently, Fayette County is under orange restriction, which means that the number of cases are going up. And out of abundance of caution, after much discussion and prayer, and disagreement in a healthy and respectful way that can only be done by the power of God's Spirit, we've made the decision for the next two weeks to postpone in-person worship, to suspend it only for two weeks as the cases in Fayette County hopefully continue to decline. What this means is that we are continuing to experiment with the new technology that we have put in place over the last few weeks We've had a wonderful group of volunteers and people and staff work together to put together live stream worship so that when we return to in-person worship, we can live stream at the same time, but that way our recordings and our sound can be better than they were before we lived in a COVID world. This is not us saying that we have not been safe before. Um, this is not saying that we have not put into place protocols that were not applicable to our congregation. We are trying to be the best stewards that we can for our most valuable resource at our church, which are our people. Those of you who support this church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. We're all in this together, even though we're experiencing it in different ways, financially, emotionally, spiritually, physically. The best thing that we can do as a church is to extend grace to one another in these times of uncertainty. I'm grateful to the leadership team of the church, which has helped think through some of these things. What we will be doing is monitoring the number of COVID cases in our county and making the best decisions for in-person worship based upon that data that is available. We're also keeping a pulse on what's going on in the life of our community and in the hospital facilities here in the area. One of the things that's going to be important as we move forward together as the church is to continue to lift one another up in prayer. As we continue to be the church, whether we are meeting in person or not. I also encourage you to check back on the church's website as often as you can for the most up-to-date information. What we intend to do so you know our intent and you know our concern is meet as a leadership team every two weeks, maybe more if necessary, to take stock of where we are and of where we need to go. As I've said over the last few days, in praying what the direction for our congregation may be, we are at an opportunity to have a blank canvas, to start afresh and to continue the good work that God is doing through Fayetteville First United Methodist Church in our world and beyond. I encourage you to pray about it as well. We'll continue our sermon series on the spiritual gifts. We'll continue to discover the things that God has put in place in our lives. 
as we seek to be God's people. And I encourage you to pray for one another, to continue to be the church. Nothing has changed about God's love. The only thing that has changed is the way that we are worshiping in person and online, and we're adapting and learning together. And it can be fun, and it can be good, and it is because it is surrounded by God's spirit. In closing, I am grateful, again, for everyone who has been a part of preparing us for in-person worship. I am grateful for those who have stayed home when you felt it necessary. I know that we are living in a time where there is much guesswork, but together we will get through it. I know some are grateful that we are suspending in-person worship out of an abundance of caution. I know some are disappointed. We are all the church, and as we are looking at our spiritual gifts and talking about the body of Christ in the month of July, we have need for one another. What God has joined together, let no one put asunder. We are together in this, and we will get through this together. In closing, I wanted to share with you a word of encouragement from Paul's letter to the Romans. It's the 12th chapter, verses 9 through 13. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. May God bless us as we seek to do God's will in this world and beyond.